Let's talk about High Life Peru. High Life Peru is an organization that was founded within the last year. They're the newest affiliate of the International Slackline Association. And the reason this group of slackliners and highliners who are just having fun practicing their sport, the reason they took the time and pain to officially incorporate as an association that's recognized by the Peruvian government as representing the sport, they did this for access issues. Places they were used to slacklining and highlining were getting shut down. They talked with the officials there who said, we don't want to just talk with a highliner. We want to talk with some official entity. So they went through the problem uh, process of getting bylaws and getting things registered. And so now they are an official association that represents slacklining and places are starting to consider opening up again. It takes a lot of work to do that. It takes a lot of work, and that's work when you could be slacklining, but it's a future vision. Yeah, slacklining as it's growing needs to mature into that. And especially when you have the ISA or International Slackline Association above as more validating for your organization, that does help. So they have, have they've had, have they had, it's an English professor here, I feel intimidated. Do they have access being opened up officially yet? They are in the process. So some areas, there's an area in Lima called Miraflores that was shut down. They are in the process actually of considering that to be a slackline park. So it might be better than it was before. Um, also, there is another area on Aniso that you'll see where the local community has welcomed in High Life Peru and being an association was part of what got them access there. Yeah, we want to share on this platform their journey of what they're able to do and accomplish by becoming official and adulting and celebrate what they have done so far. Ugo, President, Pepe Vice President, and his Secretary, Johan, Board of Directors. And so each one of them will speak in this video and share their stoke. Imaynaya kashankichi waikikuna panaikuna ayinhamui pachanta yakta. Here we are at Pachanta in our chill day in Peru with Sherry and Pepe and myself, Hugo. Welcome to Peru. Hey everyone, my name is Pepe and I am here in a pleasure of joining Sherry and Hugo here in Pachanta, uh, taking a relaxed day and enjoying these beautiful landscapes that we have around here. Let's see if everything fits in the car. Oh my gosh. share with you one of probably the most exciting project that High Life Peru has done so far. And this is to develop a High Line Park at Ananiso Canyon. This is above 4,000 meters. And what's really unique about this site, and we will show you some pictures, it's also where uh, local campesinos live. And so how did that happen? We want to kind of hear from you guys how you hooked up with these people and, and what it's like to work with them. Ananiso, wow, it's a beautiful place in the Andes, in the Cusco region, 4,300 to be exact. Ananiso is now a Highland Park in process, thanks to the community permission, authorization to give us the chance, the opportunity to develop a sport in their lands, in their territory, in harmony with the flora and fauna 
the culture and the environment in in conjunction, in fusion with our sport, our highline practice into the Andes. Uh, Pepe, do you want to add anything maybe about what it's like to be there? Well, um, Ananito, it's um, what I like to call it, it's a really wild place. It's something that I never experienced in my life, uh, especially because I come from a different region of, of the country. I come from the jungle. So I am really basically close to sea level. And just making that big jump to go to above 4,000 meters is a huge thing for me. And the air condition, the air, you know, it just takes you a bit more of time to, to adapt and breathe. And you just come here to Ananiso, and once you're getting out of the anchor, you just see a bunch of alpacas just passing through, or you're seeing some mamitas or some papichas and you know that just makes something really really unique Nole, miembro de High Life Perú. Estamos aquí en la Midline, en la provincia de La May, en Cusco. Y es este lugar donde también hace poco organizamos, en colaboración con la Municipalidad de La May, eh, un festival Eco Deportes. Eco Deportes porque combinamos eh, los deportes variedad de deportes como calistenia, eh, slackline, trickline, varias modalidades de slackline como también midline, eh, también hubo patinaje, skate, MX, hubo danzas, eh, piezas artísticas, también acrobacias, mucha variedad de formas de expresión tanto artísticas como deportivas. Quiero agradecer a esta asociación, Highlight Perú, que precisamente abre las puertas o, o abre un camino para poder fomentar este tipo de actividades o festivales con una visión eh, de cuidar nuestra, nuestro medio ambiente, eh, la naturaleza. En este festival también eh, plantamos un árbol pisonai, que es un árbol muy importante que ayuda a, al ecosistema a que haya un ecosistema adecuado para que crezcan ciertas plantas a otros arbolitos y, y demás porque estas cuerdas son cuerdas especiales ya muy especiales parte del equipo de Highlight Perú. Conocí el Highlight en Perú y hemos tenido la oportunidad de riguear en la costa, en la sierra y en la selva. 
Y él es nuestro amigo, el señor Shiva, que nos acompaña en nuestras aventuras. En la selva hay un spot hermoso, eh, es un parque, un parque recreacional que se llama King Kong, en donde se pueden colocar diversos rodeos o midline, que es súper refrescante, muy buena comida. Highlight Peru, where do you see it going into the future? I believe that the magic all about this is that we can share it. We can share it with anyone that wanna come here, wanna come join us, wanna come visit, or who wanna just highlight and have a great moment and share and know a bit more about our culture. And that will be like one of the main dreams here, like continue to develop it the park, continue to develop it the sport. And also what we wanted to do in the future is explore a bit more the country. Like Peru has this beautiful and, and magnificent landscape, like all over the places. Our diversity is more than natural diversity. It's, it's a cultural diversity, a social diversity. And these are challenges that give us the energy to keep exploring, to keep understanding how we humans are, and especially working more with the new generations, with kids, with young people, with girls, boys, and anybody who can feel this call in the same harmony that we would like to uh, share with the visitors, with foreign people, with nationals, with regional people, with indigenous people, with campesinos, with any, any person who would like to try and try to improve their balance and sharing moments for life in, in a natural place. Thank you very much. You! Ay, ay, ay. All right, so what's your idea that you had? Oh yeah, <laughs> so my idea, I, in this trip, I brought gear to my friends in Peru. And I realized through that, that there's people, groups all over the world that are having a hard time getting gear and my resources are limited. So you took just personal, as little personal gear as possible so you can take as much in yes. your two check bags. I was allowed two checked bags to go to Peru. I had all my personal gear in a carry-on and all their gear in two suitcases. Same with my husband. So we had four suitcases. And this is something you guys put together. You yes. were scrounging stuff and buying stuff. Yes. And, and it was very fun and I loved it. So my vision is to create a foundation and I want to call it the Equilibrio Foundation. Equilibrio means balance in Spanish. And it would essentially do what I did on a global scale. So there would be a team of us and we would assemble gear and resources and we would give it to people. We would hand deliver it to people all over the world. The advantage of a foundation is it would be a 401c3 tax exempt. So donations to the foundation would be tax exempt and a foundation is in the position to write grants and bring in money. So a foundation basically brings in money and then gives out money, maybe in the form of resources. Now, this is what made me really excited to do this video with Cheryl is because this is something I wanted to do years ago when I knew there was a problem getting gear into these yeah. countries where the wages are lower and the import taxes are higher, making this double whammy. And um, I had exactly. tons of good intentions and we can see how far they got. So when Cheryl brought up that she wanted to do it in, at scale, and she's already doing it personally, I was really, really excited to promote and push this. Well, all of her information will be in the description. If you want to hit her up and be a part of that, donate to it or have ideas for it, um, she would love to hear from yes. you. Yes, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank you. And now let's show you an example of what it looks like when people get gear that's uh, fresh and new. <laughs> We're so, so grateful that you made it, you're here. 
Oliva, thank you very much for coming and thank you very much for bringing all this gift. <laughs> Oh, nice. Ah, sweet. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, this is a <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There's your, there's your giant. Yeah. <laughs> Love Shackle's party, Ryan. Love Shackle's party. <laughs> Super good enough. Oh, yeah, you fit. You fit. <laughs>